Hi, Blaine. <laughs> How are you? Hi, I'm Namaste. doing great. Namaste. Namaste. Do you do you want me to call you Levin or Blaine? You can call me Blaine. Okay, I love that name. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you, and it means so much to me that you. Fulfill your thank you. Everything that you say, you do it, and you really mean it, and that expresses so much love and light to me. Thank you so much. Before you happened upon my stuff, what did your life look like? How did you feel? What was going on in your life emotionally? Oh, Lisa, oh, I, I, um, I had my clinic. <laughs> standing by because I didn't know where we were going to go. Mm -hmm. I figured it would be something about that. Mm -hmm. um, I I was suicidal, Lisa. Mm -hmm. I really, I was hanging on the edge of um, just trying to figure out if I was going to live another day. Yeah. I really, I, I, I wanted to die. Yeah. I wanted to die. I felt so disgusting and so gross and so... Um, just ugly. Mm -hmm. I felt ugly and gross and um, I just disgusted myself because I didn't know what was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just hang barely hanging on a thread with uh, my my children mm -hmm. and uh, my relationships with them mm -hmm. and uh, everything in my life. I mean, it was just like, my car or my job or uh, my schedule and just trying to get through each day. Um, also with um, nutrition mm -hmm. and trying to make sure that I eat when I'm hungry. And I was so thin and I, um, I, I barely was making it. Um, I was very, very ill. Mm -hmm. Um, my health and my uh, mental state, mm -hmm. it was just, um, I was fragile. Yeah. And and I've completely, just over in the past couple of months since I found your work, have, um, I feel like I'm thriving now. That's awesome. And it's because of you. Well, it's because you of you. Thank you. But I really was, I really was just hanging on a thread and I cried and I cried and I cried. Um, I was desperate reaching out and um, like you've talked about before in some of your videos where um, you say that when you're in that in that state yep. that um, the more that you feel like you're reaching out and begging for help mm -hmm. the more people push you away because they're like oh my god I don't want to deal with that because it's so um, it, it it reaches out and it destroys all the people that are around you too. Well, also, also, Blaine, what it is is that when we're that, first of all, you're a very emotionally honest person. And most people are in denial of how they really feel. Okay. So when there's someone in our midst who's saying, I feel this pain, it makes other people uncomfortable because it reminds them perhaps of what might be lurking inside of them. Okay. So dealing with your pain and means that they may have to face some facet of that in them and it makes them vulnerable. Your vulnerability makes them vulnerable. And that's okay. why we need to be around people who have come through it that understand that pain. And like when you're crying, I'm feeling for you, but I'm here for you. Right. You know that I've got you back. Like, I'm not yes. going to run away because you're in pain. So you can just let it go. You can just let it go, let it out. Sort of like, like what a strong mom does. A very strong, confident mom can stand with the child who is falling apart and say, I'm here for you. Just let it go. Just let it go. All right. Um, me, before I came through the veil of consciousness, I would fall right under the bus with the kids. I want to spread this type of message to as many people as possible so that they can hear it, so they can awaken to it. Um, and it has to be presented in a way that people can digest it, and it can, it can strike a chord because so many of us have been taught that our feelings don't matter. 
That's true. And that so, is very true. so the, the message has to be clear enough that people who come across it are able to relate to it and they're not embarrassed or ashamed to think about it and play with it and let the information in. I agree with that so much and that is exactly what I had to go through mm -hmm. and I found that being in a, a narcissistic relationship in my marriage <sighs> has prevented me from being able to actually show my feelings and to be able to be in touch with my feelings and that frustration of not being able to express myself prevented me from knowing who I am That's right. and and since I have been divorced and it's almost three years now that I've been divorced um, I just recently was able to connect with myself awesome. and uh, I've shared some of that information with you and it, it meant so much to me and it made me feel real that you even uh, reached out to me and expressed your feelings about that mm -hmm. and everything that you say totally reaches inside of me Good. and it brings me out awesome and and I have felt like um, it just it's been a lot of purging and getting rid of all these uh, negative dank energies and uh, in the process, just over the past two months or so, since I felt like I had this awakening moment, mm -hmm. um, it seems like I'm just more and more brave every day. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I can just feel myself being um, pulled uh, closer and closer to that true light that is inside of all of us. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's awesome. It's so exciting. You got it. You got the bug, girl. That's awesome. <laughs> you got it. It's it's like you're glowing. It's so wonderful. You're glowing. I remember that feeling. But in the beginning, it was sort of like, it was just a hope. Like, maybe it's true. I was almost afraid to believe that, almost afraid of believing in the possibility of being healed once and for all almost afraid to believe that it was possible because yes, I was so like, afraid of, of, of finding another dead end. Yes. Um, thinking that, uh, it might be the same as it has been in the past. Yeah. Uh, in, in regards to relationship yeah. with, uh, family, friends, coworkers, yeah. Um, that sort of thing, but what I have discovered is that once I keep true to myself, mm -hmm. that it helps me to just not believe the the BS that the other people are uh, might be trying to tell me, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm able to see the difference between what I used to believe. And going along with what other people wanted me to do or wanted me to say or feel, mm -hmm. that was a big, that's a big thing. Oh, is yes. that I've noticed how people try to manipulate what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. Oh, yeah. They'll talk you right out of it. Yes. They'll talk yes. You right out and of it's it. like, I know what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. And my ex-husband used to do that to me a lot. And I would even say to him, how can you know how I feel? Mm -hmm. He would say, you feel like this. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, you don't know how I feel because you're not me. Yep. And I'm telling you, I don't feel that way. Right. And he would just argue with me about it, and it would be so frustrating. Oh, yeah. But now, now that I've made that uh, distinct um, discernment mm -hmm. between... The people that want to see me grow and, mm -hmm. and let allow me to be myself and accept me the way that I am, mm -hmm. and the people that don't, um, ha have been a great tool for me. Absolutely. When you're, when you're getting in touch with that pain and you're going down for the count, you start reaching out. You make people uncomfortable. I did the same thing. And then people think, I don't want to look like her. She's a, she's a mess. And that makes them makes their ego even stronger. I'm not like her. She's a mess. Look at her. 
I've got my stuff together. So now if they're in an uncomfortable marriage, they go home and they act like it's wonderful because they're too yes. afraid to, they're too afraid to tap that nerve. Maybe it's not. Because if it's not, then I have to deal with what Blaine's dealing with. So now let me just pull the shades over my eyes again and go pretend. Right. So it feels like we're being rejected, but they're really rejecting themselves. Wow. Wow. Okay. I can see why that they turn away from it because it's more about what they're dealing with inside of themselves. It could be. Very, very similar. People can't handle... Uh someone else's pain it's because they haven't wrestled that they haven't come through that pain themselves yet wow but it okay. feels like they're pushing us away it feels like they're abandoning us and they are you know they are but it's not for the reasons that we think okay it's sort of like someone who can't go to a funeral let's say you know, someone that you love died and you expect your best friend to go to this funeral and she doesn't show up. You feel like, why can't she be there for me? But it might be because she just lost someone recently and then seeing your pain pulls her back into that grief that she hasn't processed yet. Ah, uh, okay. That, that makes sense. That makes total sense. And I, I noticed how when I really needed... Mm -hmm my friends or or someone to listen to me um there were just one or two people yeah. that were able to digest absolutely the things the things that i had to say absolutely unfortunately when i brought it up to like my adult children mm -hmm. i have an 18 year old and a 24 year old mm -hmm. when i brought it up to them or when they would see me um, unfortunately for them, they weren't able to um, uh, embrace the uh, the sadness that I that I had inside of me. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, I wonder if it had something to do with because they were part of it. Yeah. Also, because children children by nature. Um, they're not supposed to be taking care of their parents' feelings by nature. Right. And when a child, that is an enormous responsibility for a child because how, how can I be there for this person when this person is supposed to be, it makes them feel very fragile themselves because if you're falling apart, then who are they going to lean on? So that's yes. really, and when it comes to the mother. difference between before I came across your work and the difference between now um, I, ha I have really mended, uh, the relationship between my children and I, and it has, it has also turned a complete 360. Absolutely. Just over in the past couple of months since I've been following your work, mm -hmm. it has made a tremendous difference so cool. in, in the lives of my children. Mm -hmm. That's really so, one of the reasons I do what I do is to affect the next generation because if you can change then you can change if I can help you change there's a mom that helps her kids change and then we've got children who are going to have children without these problems and that's how we collectively help raise the vibrations of the planet which is so cool so that tell is me cool. what thank you for sharing that that means so much um, what was it about what was the message that you heard in my work that gave you hope that you understood what I was feeling and you didn't even know me. Mm -hmm. Because the first minute and from the moment I clicked play, mm -hmm. I connected with you and what you were saying and everything about what you said in that particular video mm -hmm. made me feel like you knew exactly how I felt and you had been in my shoes. Mm -hmm. you, you knew what... To say, and you, for that brief moment of that video, you got inside of me, and I was able to realize that it wasn't him. Right. It was me. Mm -hmm. And up until that point, I had never even imagined that it was me because 
I've been trying to fight and fight and fight. And what I realize is I'm fighting myself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People relate to that because in that video I talk about how, you know, we're trying to convince someone that yes. what, of what we're saying, we didn't mean what they think we said. Yes. And they keep, no, I know that you meant that. I know mm -hmm. why you said that. But that's not yes. really why I said that. And we think we're going crazy because yes. we're saying that's really not what I meant. And their their agenda is to not hear us. Their yes. agenda is to scramble our minds so we can't think for ourselves. So we can't connect to our feelings. And then what's happening is they're, they're, they're putting their finger on that wound that we're not good enough. Yes. And so yes. we keep trying to be good enough. So, so when you're saying it was me, um, not blame, it was that we didn't know that we didn't have to please this narcissist, that that was not our purpose for life. And that right. if he doesn't agree with us, that's okay. We have nothing to prove. And nothing that our prove. job is to pay attention to how we feel around this narcissist. And if we feel uncomfortable, that's our responsibility to remove ourselves from a porcupine. We don't have to continue mud wrestling with porcupines. So in that sense, it was, that's where you were crossing the line. I think that was, wait a minute, there's something that I can do? <laughs> yes. there's, there's a formula that I can follow that's going to allow me to be able to detach from this madness? He doesn't have to control me? That's really, I think, what resonated with you, is the idea that yes. there was a formula, which is awesome. Yes. And then awesome. from that from that point on, I just I could not get enough mm -hmm. of your videos and anything that you had mm -hmm. to say. That's awesome. I went to your website. I I looked into getting your book, mm -hmm. which I I have all your books right now. Awesome. I'm working on. I'm still on the self the first self affirmations book. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to stop. No, I'm just going to keep on. You can't, it's very important that, um, you know, and I've said this, I've interviewed two other people today, and the message has to be that, you know, a video, and some people use YouTube like they do a Xanax. I'm having a bad moment, and there's nothing, I can understand it, because I used to do that too, until I really figured out what I had to do. But it's so important that people understand that this type of recovery work is daily, because we've been hypnotized from zero to, even even in utero, we've been downloaded with information. And up until about eight, we're in, literally in a hypnotic brainwave state. So the subconscious mind is just accepting data. So if we've been abused overtly or covertly, we have felt that pain and that abandonment, and we presume that we are that abandonment. We are worthy of that abandonment. It's our fault. And so... We must understand that that's our default setting. And that moving forward, we must use the creative mind, which is the conscious mind, to take control over the new programs and the new data. And if you do that every single day, take control over the new data. What will happen is you'll drown out the old data. And you'll be able to, I can do it now, like... If I'm doing something mundane and like vacuuming, I might hear an old, stupid thought process. But I'm able to say, why are you, that's, I don't want to think that. And I'm able, to, I'm able to say, get out of here. Psh, I don't want to think, I want to think this. I want to look at the sky. I want, to, I want to be thankful for my home. I want to be thankful for my feet. I want to be thankful for my hair. I want to be thankful that I can breathe. Yes. Yeah. But you've got to be able to transcend and make connections and detach Detach, detach, you detach from that video, you began to detach from what was happening. You were learning that, wait a minute, I'm, I don't have to be enmeshed with this, this guy. I can think my own thoughts, which is so cool. So cool. Once you've transcended a lot of the old and you're transcending the old patterns, you're able to now take control over the conscious mind, the creative mind, opposed to allowing the subconscious programming to rule and dictate your behavior. And your thought processes. That is that is correct. And in the in the past, I had not even. No one has ever explained to me mm -hmm. 
that it's even possible yeah to do that mm -hmm. and um because of the society that we're in it's it always seems like there's, you know, you go to the doctor, you go to the psychiatrist, and they're going to prescribe you medications. The medication's going to help. But really and truly, it's all here. Yeah. And that's where we have to make the change. Yeah. And just knowing that it's possible and hearing people like you mm -hmm. talk about it mm -hmm. um, helps me to believe it. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's it. We have to. And that's why I'm so excited about having you and people like Valerie and, and um, Mary Kay on board and a few others because you speak to the hope. So many people are depressed and so many people are loading up on all sorts, all sorts of types of antidepressants. And some of us are suicidal right now. Valerie said the same thing where I really just didn't want to live anymore. It was that bad. I, I couldn't imagine. Why would I want to wake up again? Why, why do this again? Why? Why do this again? This is this is all I'm going to get. And then to come to speak to the hope that you can yeah. take someone like that and say, "Don't give up yet." And that's what I tell everybody: Don't give up yet. Give I'm getting this chance. Good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, because you represent hope now. You represent hope. You've started doing your own videos, which I th think is awesome. Um, and, it, you know, um, it's just a matter of, you know, understanding and believing and sending the message because that's what, for someone to get involved with our Google Plus community or for someone to buy a book, they, they have to, what's the payoff? And so if people can really believe that transformation really is possible. It is. The, the whole yeah. lives of, their lives improve. I mean, you attract yeah. abundance. You attract love. You would, you finally have the relationships with your children you really want. You go to bed hugging your pillow and go, oh, my God, I love being in my bed. I love myself. I love myself. You wake up in that spirit. Everything you eat tastes better. The sky looks bluer. I mean, it's just you become alive. You, you really, you're reborn. But for people to really believe that this could transform their lives, they need to hear from people like you who have got, I can say it, and I'm so thankful that the people who have come on this journey so far believe me in what I wrote and what they saw on YouTube. But it's so much more beneficial to hear people like you who have been changed by this work tell their story. So I just want to thank you so much for that. Thank you, Lisa. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, all I do is guide. That's it. All I do is guide. It's up to the individual person to take the tools and to just little by little work it. Well, I, I am going to take anything that I can get my hands on. Mm -hmm. And I believe in myself mm -hmm. so much more than I ever have in my whole entire life. It's so cool. It's so cool. I mean, your trajectory, again, your trajectory is this. There's no stopping you. There's no, there's, I mean, I even look back on my life when I think back to, like, where I was, a single mom with three kids, waking up at 2.30 in the morning to write this book, having three jobs, being so exhausted, you know. I could never have, it's, my life has turned out more beautiful than I ever thought it could. And that's because I just keep following the bliss. Okay, that feels good, so I'm going to do that. And then that, that feels empowering. I'm going to do more of that. There's no more. I, I never even think I can't do something anymore. Right. It's gone. It's right. actually gone. It's like, okay, I want to do that. Okay. That's the way we're supposed to raise children. Okay, try that. Explore that. Yeah. So it really is. You're, 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 the possibilities for your life are endless. They are, and I am really putting myself out there. I am not afraid to say what I'm feeling. Good. If someone doesn't appreciate what I have to say mm -hmm. uh, about what I'm feeling, mm -hmm. then, oh, well. That's okay. That's okay. They're entitled to their opinion. They are. They're entitled to their opinion, and they can do they can go do their thing, and I'm going to keep doing my thing. Exactly. And that's okay. Absolutely. And 
I am trying to uh, portray that to my my children, especially okay. my my ten year old daughter, mm -hmm. who occasionally she listens to me, listen to you, mm -hmm. and I, I might say something to her. Uh, there was something that we did together, and, and that is we made vision boards together. Love it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, there you go. You get a gold star, Blaine. That's hey. awesome. I love it. That's he has, those. Uh, she has a lot of dogs in her in her wow. vision board. I thought, oh my gosh, I'll put another dog on there. <laughs> she might want to be a veterinarian. She does. There you go. There you go. So it's awesome. And then there's mine. There you go. Live your life. That's right. I love it. I love it. It's awesome. And just keep adding to it. Whatever the pictures mean to you. Sometimes you don't even know what they mean. There were pictures that I put on my vision board. I had no idea what they meant to me in the time. I just knew I felt drawn to the picture. So tell me, yeah. um, um, just just uh, if you if you wanted anyone to know about the kind of work that I do, what would you consider is the most valuable? The work that you do that is the most valuable, I would say, is that the fact that you you make yourself available yeah. to um, correspond mm -hmm. with your family. Mm -hmm. your, and that's what like, this coaching program is all going to be about. It's going to be a 12, I think it's 12 weeks long, and it's going to start on the same day. We're all going to take the journey together, and we're going to have a Facebook community. And um, I'll be leading the webinars each week. So I'm really, really excited. So it's really about yeah. create, creating this, like you said, a family or community of people who just go through this together. Hopefully, I'm hoping that's the way it turns out anyway. Hoping. But you're, you're a yeah. pleasure. Your life is really turning around. And like I said, Blaine, it's just only going to get better. Keep growing um, and keep sharing. I'm so excited about it, and I I started journaling, mm -hmm. like you had said in one of your videos. I went to uh, a craft store, and I bought this awesome uh, journaling book and these really cool glittery pens, yep. and I started writing in the journal, and I wrote last month mm -hmm. about um, what I was going to expect to see in my life and manifest in my life before the end of the month, mm -hmm. if, which was for January. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you that so much happened awesome. in between awesome. the beginning of January and the end of January, which was just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And I reflected back, and one of the things I had said was that I really wanted to um, get some things done around my house and get some decorations and, and some new furniture. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, I'm sitting at my daughter's little desk that's awesome. brand new in her in her bedroom. Wow! I had a tool shed, which we which wow. you talk about sometimes. I had a, a brand new tool shed that um, I got, uh, mm -hmm. and and that was just simply because that didn't even cost me a penny. Wow! It was actually some something that happened because. Uh, there was a bad storm that had come through, and it had destroyed my shed. And I thought, well, I'll just call my homeowner's insurance and see if they cover it. And they did. Oh, that so is have, awesome. I have a brand new tool shed. So and um, I booked a uh, Disneyland trip for me and my daughter. Oh, my God. I, yes. I've uh, put out some applications for new jobs. Wow. And, I mean, I have just had so many things going on. Just since the beginning of January, and I feel like it's because I knew it was there and I felt it. Awesome, awesome. I say that in the videos, and that's going to be part of the coaching program too, is that we have to set goals on paper. It's like a blueprint for the subconscious mind. Oh, that's what she wants? Remember, the subconscious mind just accepts information. That's what she wants? Okay. And the universe conspires to meet you at that place. But if you're lost in the fog of old programming, you're not creative. Not, not deliberately creative. You're creating, but you're not deliberately creating. And it's so much more fun to be alive and deliberately create. It's yes, absolutely it is. fun. Thank you so much, Blaine. I can't thank you enough.
Thank you, Lisa. I love you. I love you too, dear one. Yeah, I know. That's how I feel. I want to kiss all my guys. I feel the same way. Thank you for contributing to the community too. Keep it up. People love you. You're making a difference. I'll keep making a difference. Awesome. Thank you so much. You made a difference today. Thank you. Bye. Love you, bye. Love you too. Elephants. Bye. My mother's mother was an alcoholic. Grandma lived directly around the corner from us. The rear of her house faced our backyard. My mother's younger brother, Peter, lived a few blocks away. He was an alcoholic and a compulsive gambler. My mother's twin brother, John, never really had a home. He, too, was an alcoholic and a compulsive gambler. My mother's father, whom I never met, died while my mother was pregnant with me. He was also an alcoholic, and according to Uncle John, he liked to beat up women, too. I would not have known that if it were not for Uncle John. My mother tended to glorify the man who found money to buy himself tailored suits while his own children dressed in tattered hand-me-downs supplied by empathetic neighbors. My father's father was an alcoholic. It is rumored that he was also physically abusive to women. According to raw stories told by my father, my grandfather was an explosive drunk who got kicks out of torturing his children when he got loaded. In the clouds of inebriation, he'd find humor in hammering a nail into a piece of wood he'd place on his son's head. He was a volatile man whose rage-filled, drunken episodes could not be trusted. My father's natural mother, Pauline, I never met. She committed suicide when my father was only four. My step-grandmother, Elizabeth, married my grandfather after the suicide. My grandfather was in danger of losing his four children to child services due to his neglect of his children. Elizabeth, a warm, kind-hearted woman, married my grandfather and did her best to weave the family back together. She brought with her a retarded daughter from a prior marriage. Together, my grandfather and Elizabeth had a child of their own named Paula. My father had three maternal siblings. His two older sisters were named Maria and Evelyn. His older brother and the third child of the family was named Sam. My father was the youngest. Maria detached herself from her family as an adolescent. I never knew her. I have been told she resented Elizabeth as her dead mother's replacement. She severed her relationships with all the members of her family as soon as she believed she was old enough to do so. I recall sensing the sorrow in my father's voice whenever he spoke of her. He missed the older sister who tried desperately to mother him after their mother's suicide. His sister Evelyn suffered from paranoid schizophrenia and was in and out of mental hospitals during my childhood. Sam was a large man who reminded me of a silverback gorilla. He was tall, hunched over, had a protruding jaw, a huge skull, and for some reason stared at the ceiling whenever he spoke to you. I tried my best not to look at him very often. Mom and Dad rarely blended both sides of the family. We'd visit my father's parents on Sundays, and my mother's brothers would stop by during the week, if they stopped by at all. My mother's family wasn't the kind you'd visit anyway. John never really had a home of his own, aside from the homes of the married women he slept with, and Peter was an undemonstrative man who made it known he didn't appreciate company. My mother's mother wasn't what most would consider the nurturing or communicative type. She was a frail, quiet woman with stern green eyes who was wound tightly like a top. I never felt like she was my grandma. This was not a sentiment that I ever left my head.